Hey folks, this is Christian, or CEO for short speaking. In the present video, I'm going to introduce to you the main parts of our future training. The PLC itself, the brain, respectively the output training. Just to have a term of comparison, here is the brain, here is another example, both of them are wired exactly, exactly the same. And here I have an output trainer a bit more complicated. Here, this one is a bit simpler. And here, this is going to be the one we're going to build together. So let's start. I'm going to have five points to cover. First, the basic capability of the PLC, about the brain. Second, the configuration flexibility. Third, the wiring flexibility. Fourth, documentation for the PLC. And the fifth, related to software. Okay, let's start. First, the basic capability. I'm gonna pick up this one first. That's a Pentra Smart. This one has eight inputs and four outputs. Okay? That's the basic capability. As you can see, it can be connected Ethernet. Next is the Click PLC made by Automation Direct. This one has eight inputs and six outputs. So pretty similar to the other one, but it has two more outputs. Okay. And it also has the connection to the Ethernet available serial. You can convert it with the appropriate uh, converting cable into USB. Next one is a M221 made by uh, Modica. So this one has 14 inputs and uh, 10 outputs. And when we pass to the next one, this is a uh, FC6A from iDEC. 16 inputs, 12 outputs. If we compare these two, for instance, it's something very interesting. This is a Japanese one. That's a M221 made by Modica. So if you take a look, it's an identical footprint, but it's not only this. The bottom connector here for both is the same, 15 screws. And in the top, nine screws, nine screws, eight screws, eight screws. And the position is the same, but it's not only this. The display is the same position for both. Here is the cover to mount an expansion, which is right here for the other one. And same place for the memory extension and same place for the USB connection right here. Even the same place for the power connector. It's absolutely amazing. So again, that's a Modicon and that's a Japanese one. Okay? And they have a same footprint. Finally, our guy taken out of the box so this is the CP1L from Amra. This one has 12 inputs and eight outputs, okay? So this is about the basic capability, let's say, okay? Now, number two, let's talk about configuration flexibility. All of them actually allow, if you decide later on to expand the capabilities, all of them they have here on the side, a connector, so this is a modular construction. You can add more and more modules to expand capability. It's absolutely similar for the Click PLC. You remove that cover from here, and by removing it, you can uh, find the connector where you can put some other modules. Similarly, here you remove the sticker, but not now, anytime you need to add more module to daisy chain and absolutely similar to that one you remove the sticker here and you can then add some other modules to expand the capability surely ours which is that one i just removed the connector from here actually sorry not the connector the uh, cover is written on the cover expansion so instead of this one if you pick up for instance an additional module you put the flat cable over here, 
you plug it inside, it has the same footprint as the original. So the original had 12 inputs, eight outputs. You add 12 more inputs, eight more outputs. So you convert all that into what? Into a 24 input PLC, 16 outputs. And still it's going to fit exactly on the board, okay? Because we talk about uh, flexibility in the configuration, all of them, they have an option to expand the memory. So here, this one has a dedicated module for an external memory. If you want to load the program directly from here and not from a computer. So have the other ones. Right here inside is the connection to the computer. This one is a very friendly one. You can use a standard printer connector you can find everywhere. Okay, It's a very cheap cable actually. So it won't cost you much. And also, by connecting that uh, little cable, it allows you to have a connection to a uh, analog input. So you can connect, for instance, a potentiometer. However, right here in the middle, where is the additional cover, okay, there are several options you can connect here to expand the capability of it. I don't think you're gonna need this one any soon. This is only for old equipment uh, communicating with a DV9 connector, the old serial, okay? We leave them aside. Here is another serial connector available from the standard 485. Here, this one may be very interesting because it's allowing you to connect the Ethernet, or instead, you can remove it and place another one, which is a display. So it allows you by using the uh, local push buttons here uh, to navigate inside the program to see different instructions. Okay? As we don't need it right now, we place the cover back. So at the beginning, we're going, we're going to use it as is. See? So that's about the overall flexibility for the configuration for all the PLC. So I can say that the five of them are pretty similar from that point of view, okay? After that, let's talk about the third, the third point, which is wiring flexibility. And here, I'm gonna show you what is the advantage of the armor. First, if I'm starting with the small ones, the Pentra Smart and the Click, both of them, they have a pretty similar connector. I'm gonna remove this one and in order to play with that connector, you're going to need a special screwdriver. This one, it's a 2.5 millimeter flat because only this one is going to be able to enter here. So it's not very, let's say, user-friendly. You have to be very careful because it's a fragile construction. Similarly, this one, the click, which I like a lot otherwise. This one is the same kind of connector with very small screws and you can only use the flat, only use the flat 2.5 millimeter, or this one here, which is the same, 2.5 millimeter flat, okay? This is the only one working here inside. And if you talk about both of them, which are having a similar footprint, the Modicon and the IDEC, then for these ones, there is only one screwdriver to use, which is the 3.5 millimeter flat. This one is working fine on that one, as it does on the other one right here or on any screw, see? So 3.5 millimeter flat. Now, when we talk about our choice, which is the Omron CP1L, surely you can use the 3.5 millimeter flat. But additionally, you can use even a bigger one, four millimeter flat, and the four millimeter flat is gonna work just fine on these screws, okay? But there's more. You can use a Phillips number one. That's a Phillips number one. It's working perfectly on this one. And even a Phillips number two, so Philips number two, yes, it's bigger, a bit bulkier, but still, it's working fine on that PLC. And there's more. 
you can even use a square number zero, which is a Robertson. And this one is gonna also work fine on our PLC. So from that perspective, because talking about the wiring flexibility, this one may, be, may become a, a very interesting issue for the beginners. You can use a variety of tools right here for the terminal blocks, which are, by the way, very sturdy, very solid. Okay? It's nothing to talk about the overall reliability because all the five of them here are very reliable, so there's not a point. But this one looks to me sturdier and better made for the beginners, okay? So I'm gonna place it right here. Now, the, ter the third point was about wiring the fourth. The fourth is about documentation. For that respect, for the Omron PLCs, not only for that particular model, but for all of them, there is a ton of documentation available. If I'm just giving you an example, because if you look for any manual on the internet, you can actually download it. But if you pick up a site like uh, plc247.com, uh, you are going to find plenty of documentation about uh, Omron PLCs, including our choice, CP1L. Uh, the fifth point, and the last one for the present video, is about the software. Despite that some others, they think that the software uh, may, a bit may be a bit bulkier for Omron, but I still consider it a uh, user-friendly software. And uh, also to give you a very good uh, uh, example, uh, go and look for uh, Gary Short, which is an amazing programmer. And uh, the site uh, he's publishing all the info is accautomation.com. You have plenty of tutorials for Omron. You also have uh, programming examples and so. Uh, so for that reason, I consider that our choice, which is going to be the CP1L, it's a very good one. So in order to summarize, I'm gonna say again that this is going to be the part containing the brain of the PLC, okay? And uh, by connecting on that interface, a flat cable. Okay. We're going to be able to connect to a similar interface on the output trainer. Okay. Like this. So that's how the two parts are going to be working together exactly as you can see on the other ones. Okay. So I'm going to focus uh, additionally on the output trainer. And in one of the next videos, we're going to discuss in detail about uh, the bill of materials, how the parts are looking like when you look for them uh, uh, on Amazon. I'm going to present you the lists and the prices. So we're going to go closer and closer to build our trailer. Thank you, guys.